All right, problem number three, one of the easiest problems you will have on a mechanics test for me, um, because I'm just going to give you this square right here, um, and it's just plugging into these formulas, the stress transformation equations. Sorry, this is sideways, uh, but the stress transformation equations right here. I'll, I'll try to get this... Um, and you could print this out uh, for this semester if I'm doing this online test. You can print this out. This will be the you know last um, page on the the test. And we're really just pulling in, it in. Three things I can ask for you to do. I can ask, hey, what are the new stresses at this new orientation? Or what I'm doing for this problem, hey, what are the principal stresses and its orientation? Um, and I can ask what are the maximum in-plane shear stresses. Now on the test, I probably will ask all three of these. Even though we're only going to do two today, um, we're not going to do this um, new stresses at a new angle, but um, I can definitely ask that, ask you to do that, and probably will. So be ready for all three of those. All right, so anyway, part A. Hey, what are the principal stresses? Theta 1, th th sigma 1, sigma 2, and the orientation theta P. What's the value of the shear stress at this orientation? Don't forget to go ahead and answer that question for me. Let's talk about that one. Um, and then sketch the results. Then next one we're going to say, hey, what's the maximum shear stress and orientation? And don't forget to answer this question for me right here. Um, and, and you will show me that when you sketch it. But let's talk about that. What is the shear stress when we have principal stresses the shear stress is zero right here. Uh, but what is the normal stress when you have the maximum in-plane shear stress? The normal stress is sigma average of sigma y and sigma x. Okay. All right, so first of all, I, I give this to you, but you need to know and realize that this that means sigma x is positive 25 MPA, sigma y negative 50 why negative? Because it's drawn in compression, and compression is negative. <clears throat> and tau xy is not... that. This is what I think of as a positive corner. This is a positive corner. They're not pointing to the positive corners. This is a negative, <clears throat> negative 15 MPA. So, I, you know, I say this is easy. It's also easy to make mistakes and get the wrong answers if you don't realize, hey, that's positive 25, but negative 50, negative 15. Those are the stresses that are given to you right there. All right, so the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, there's an equation. The equation says sigma x, 25, plus sigma y, negative 50, divided by 2, plus and minus the square root, sigma x minus sigma y, divided by 2 squared, plus tau squared. Okay? Be careful, you know, with those positives and negatives. All right, so this would be, let me, negative, whoops, negative 12.5 plus and minus 40.39. So negative 12.5 plus 40.39 will be 27.89 MPA is sigma 1, and sigma 2 would be negative 52.89 MPA. I always say that the sigma 1 is just the positive, uh, is the largest value, not largest magnitude, but the largest value. So the positive value, 27.89, is larger than the negative, uh, 52.89. Uh, anyway, those are my stresses. My tau is zero. Now let me sketch. The, or, oh, yeah, before I sketch them, I need to know what orientation. Let me box those in. I need to know what orientation should I sketch them at? What's my theta p? Well, tangent of 2 theta p is tau, negative 15, over sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2. That's over that whole thing. All right, so that would give me a theta p of negative 10.9 degrees. Be careful, that's a 2 theta p. Uh, so my calculator really gave me, what, you know, 21.8 or something divided by 2. Uh, my theta p is negative 10.9. So I need to sketch this. I, it was right here, this 
orientation. I need, need to sketch it clockwise 10.9. Clockwise 10.9. So this angle 10.9 degrees. Okay, but, oh man, should this go on my Y face or my X face? Should that go on my Y face or my X face? Well, let me plug negative 10.9 to my stress transformation equations. I'm going to plug in theta of 10.9. So I'm really saying, hey, what are the stresses at negative 10.9 degrees? We'll plug in theta as negative 10.9, plug in um, sigma x of 25, sigma y negative 50, tau xy of negative 15. Sorry, it's a great way to double check your answers. You would get a sigma of 27.89. So that is what belongs on these faces, 27.89 MPA. Then that means the let me not set, draw it negative and give it a negative, just that arrow tells me it's negative. So 52.89. And no shear. Don't draw any shear. Stress is shear. Stress is zero. All right, so that was what I was looking for for the first part. Now, the second part, maximum shear stress. Maximum shear stress. Tau max. Now, I have an equation. I have an equation on that equation sheet, but it is actually this square root. It is that square root. It is 40.39. 40.39 MPA. Theta S. I could calculate. There's an equation for it, but it's 45 degrees away from theta P. It's 45 degrees away. I can add or subtract 45 from that. I'm going to add, so 34.1 degrees. And sigma average is negative 12.5 MPA. So let me sketch this. Let me sketch this. So this would be 34.1 degrees from my usual orientation. Uh, I would have a, whoops, this should be a, Compressive 12.5, 12.5. I would like you to label them in two places, but then the opposite side is going to be the same. And then a shear stress, and I haven't gone into positive and negative, uh, so a shear stress of 40.39 right there. So, you know, the... Um, the maximum shear stress, uh, you don't, you can, but you don't have to redo all those calculations because you've done a lot of that inside this shear. Here, here, right here is the um, tau max. Did you notice right there that was also that was the tau average, right there. So the those numbers were kind of embedded in the principal stress, but you can go to your formula sheet. And we could recalculate that. I could find theta s right there. I could find tau max right there. I could find sigma a. Even give you an equation for sigma average, as if you couldn't take the average of those two values. But I know you can do it. Now, the last thing, I would definitely look at the regular stress transformation equations. What if I had given you this and said part C? Find the um, new stresses at an angle of, you know, 15 degrees counterclockwise from the one shown. Uh, so then you would take those stresses in and plug them in right here. 2 theta, so sine of 2 times 15, cosine of 2 times 15, uh, to get my new sigma x, my new tau xy, and also, I'm going to ask you for a sigma y, but your sigma y you can get by take, taking those two pluses and changing them to minuses. Okay? But that one I hope and expect everybody to get this, this third problem right. Maybe even start with this problem on the test because it's straightforward. You know what to expect. 
like I said, I'm just going to start you with that figure right there. All right. And then you'll ace the test. All right. All right. All right. Good luck. Okay.